Thanks for listening. This is Brian Hurley from Business Performance Improvement. The podcast, Lean Six Sigma Bursts, are short lessons, comments, Q&A, and insights. If you have a question, send your question through the Anchor app, and we might feature you on a future episode. Or contact me at biz-pi.com. It gets more complicated, obviously, with more shifts, because now how do you pull them in without changing their work schedule completely? So I've seen it done a couple different ways. One is complete shutdown of the area and then hoping and knowing that if we change this enough there's opportunity that we will catch up pretty quick after the changes are made right if you can see that we could easily take 20 percent out of this process in throughput time or you know increase the flow by that amount that week we're down we can catch up by the next couple weeks and so then surpass where we were so you take that hit right now, and then you know that these changes are going to be better and we'll be able to catch up, surpass where we'd be a month from now, had we just kept doing the same thing. Uh, that's a little risky. Some try to work ahead a little bit, not ideal. You know, that's overproduction. That's building up inventory. There's risks involved with that. But if the team isn't way behind, that could be an option. Then you use that week to cover your orders. And then the next week, you have a new process that even if you fall a little bit behind, you can catch up fairly quickly. Another option is to, you know, run a slower shift, fewer people on each team, but pull those people out and try to figure out a way to have them come in at different times from their normal shifts so they can have a voice for those other two shifts. Or you have like a later period where you have some overlap time. So maybe you start in the afternoon on the day shift and then the event goes toward till the middle of the second shift and then the night shift person overnight graveyard shift comes in early but they're not coming in in the morning or staying late after their shift so there's some things like that to play around with but you still keep the line running but it's going to be low volume because not everyone's there they're you're pulling out key people to participate and then the other one is Probably more like what you're seeing is you have representatives or supervisors or leads that are in the event and they're the spokesperson for the the workers. And then they're communicating back and forth throughout the day. But there should be a lot of interruptions of them to get their feedback. So, but you're trying to minimize the time that they're not doing work. That's okay, but you know, you do lose some continuity and um, it's kind of like you're asking for approvals versus them being part of the solutions to it, right? You're trying to pull their ideas, go back and plan it without them. So sometimes the buy-in isn't as strong because they weren't really directly involved, even though their voice was heard and they got input into it. They didn't get to design it themselves. They didn't get to understand the whole process. They only saw their part of the process or not really seeing the full value stream. So that's the downside, but it's less disruptive to the flow, right? So these are all trade-offs of doing it. If you can find ways to shift more towards stopping or running a smaller shift of people getting less output, but getting more engagement with the people doing the work, I think that's going to be more effective and more buy-in. So the planning takes a while because you might have to look at it and say, we need to get prepared for this. We can't stop this in two weeks and be ready. We might have to look out eight weeks from now before we can build up enough reserves or stock, plan our schedules right to get make sure we have the most people there. Can't pick weeks where there's a lot of vacation or holidays, you know. So when are we going to be best staffed up? Make sure everyone's available. So we have, you know, even pulling in team people from other teams to help out while the core people are working. You know, we talked about that flex team. They could be more dedicated to that area in the production side while the other workers are off. So again, kind of have to plan it like they're on vacation or on travel. What would you do normally to backfill? Can we do something like that? Or at least do like some kind of split where you do like half days, four hours a day. So half the time they're in this event, you stretch it out longer. So maybe it's not three or five days, it's six to 10 days but you do only half days. So then half the time they're in this event, the other half the time the line is running, at least you're getting half the output. 
that you might normally get. Yeah, it, it is a trade-off um, of impact to the business and engagement with the frontline workers. But I think trying shifting it closer to more in frontline worker engagement and taking the hit on the the output, knowing that you'll be able to catch up if you do it right. You'll be able to catch up from whatever losses you had during that time there away. Let me pause for a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Creative Safety Supply. Creative Safety Supply is a great resource for free guides, infographics, and continuous improvement tools. I recommend starting with their 5S guide. It includes breakdowns of the five pillars, ways to begin implementing 5S, and even organization tips and color charts. From red tags to floor markings, it's all there. Download it for free at creativesafetysupply.com slash 5S. LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com has a list of glossary items about popular process improvement terms, along with a history of Lean and Six Sigma methods, and key influencers like Dr. Edward Stemming, Henry Ford, Taichi Ono, Shigeo Shingo, and many more. You can also learn how to access affordable Lean and Six Sigma training and certification. Visit LeanSixSigmaDefinition.com.